What exactly is a Ram 1500 e-torque hybrid system all about and how does it work? Well, today we're gonna to take a deep dive into the system and see whether or not it is worth your money. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I've mentioned the e-torque system a number of times, but never really did a full dedicated video on it. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna to take a look at, first of all, some major components, how it works, what exactly it does, and the benefits of having an e-torque system in your Ram 1500 trucks. Then we're gonna get this truck and another truck, the test truck, on the road, and we're gonna see whether or not there is actually some tangible benefits to this e-torque system. Lastly, I'll talk about maybe some negative things, some things I don't personally like about this e-torque system as a mechanic. Kicking things off, Ram introduced this e-torque system in 2019. They call it a mild hybrid system. In my opinion, calling it a hybrid system to begin with, it's a little bit generous. Um, at the base level, there are two major components to worry about. We have the motor generator as well as the battery pack. Now, power is supplied to the motor from the battery pack and then that power is transferred to the engine or the crankshaft um, by a belt. If you can understand that, you can understand this mild hybrid system. There's really not much to it. The magic happens with this motor generator right there. Uh, basically this takes the place of the alternator and it can charge first of all the 48 volt battery pack in the back of the cab as well as indirectly charge uh, the 12 volt battery up here through a DC to DC charger and unlike an alternator that can only generate power this beauty right here it can actually output power as well helping to turn the crankshaft giving this engine a little bit more of a boost. Now in my opinion there are four benefits to this e-torque system the first one is the one that Ram likes to shove down everyone's throat. It is the added torque that the e-torque system gives to this engine. Ram claims that the e-torque system will add up to 90 pound-feet of torque to this engine. And to me, it's a little bit deceiving for a couple of reasons. First off, the torque that is delivered to this engine is only for the first half wheel rotation. Uh, basically anything above one or two miles per hour the e-torque system is not delivering any torque whatsoever to the engine. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is the power ratings. Behind me, we have our test dummy today. It's a fourth gen Ram 1500, 2022 classic. Um, same V6, same identical drive line. And this thing is putting out 305 horsepower as well as 269 pound feet of torque. So this fifth gen with the exact same 3.6 liter V6 with the e-torque engine adding 90 foot pounds of torque should have 305 horsepower as well as 360-ish pound-feet of torque. Nope, this thing has 305 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque. So that extra 90 pound-feet of torque that is advertised so strongly with the Z-Torque system isn't even in the actual final power ratings for the engine. So a little deceiving if I do say so myself. Either way, you guys saw my trailer hooked up to that fourth gen. So we will be doing some acceleration testing between those two trucks to really see in the real world if this e-torque system actually is delivering more torque. The second benefit of the e-torque system is the start-stop ability. When you're driving in town, in the city, stoplight to stoplight, when this truck comes to a full stop, the engine will actually shut off and then when you go back to start the e-torque, the motor generator will actually start the engine through the belt, turning the crankshaft. I actually really like this because you're not using the actual traditional starter. Um, so you're not gonna wear out or burn out the starter. The benefit of that is fuel economy, of course. Apparently this 3.6 liter V6 with the e-torque will get one mile per gallon better in the city than the V6 without the e-torque system. Um, between the two trucks, we are gonna be running a little bit of a fuel economy test in the real world. So we'll see if there actually is a real difference. The third benefit of having the e-torque system is the ability to smoothen out transmission shifts. Now, the way this happens is through the motor, the motor generator. Um, it can either speed up or slow down the crankshaft. This would be advantageous, let's say, if you're trying to upshift, you'd wanna try and slow down the crankshaft. If you're looking at downshift, you'd wanna actually speed up the crankshaft just to try and make those shifts extra buttery. And in my personal opinion, I think the ZF8 speed in these Ram 1500 trucks 
is one of the smoothest units um, in the segment already. So having the addition of the e-torque to really help smoothen out those shifts is gonna make this transmission just feel really, really good. The fourth and final benefit I thought worth mentioning was the regenerative energy capture that this system can perform. When the truck starts to slow down, the motor generator will take some of that energy and put it back into the battery pack. Essentially taking some of that energy would have been, that would have been lost to heat normally is now gonna be stored in that battery pack. So I keep pointing back here because this is where the battery is. I haven't showed you guys yet, but might as well do that. Had to, uh, you know, do a little bit of digging because, uh, well, it wasn't as easy to get to. So that is the battery pack right there. Apologize there's no light in here right now, but uh, yeah, 48 volt battery pack. It is inside the cab on the driver's side. You got to pull the seat and then, you know, do a little bit of tinkering, but uh, that's where the battery pack is. Now, before we head outside, you guys already saw, I do have a 2022 Ram Classic with the 3.6 liter V6. Both that truck and this truck have basically the exact same driveline, both a 3.6 liter engine, same transmission, same gearing, 321 gears. Um, the only real difference is that this truck utilizes the e-torque system. Um, so it should be a really good comparison between those two trucks. Um, first up, is our acceleration test. All right, so pretty simple stuff. We're gonna go zero to 60 kilometers an hour. We're gonna put the truck in four wheel drive, put the hammer down. We're gonna see what happens. We're gonna do two runs with each truck. Obviously we have our 8,000 pound enclosed trailer behind us for some good weight. Should be a really nice acceleration test to see if this e-torque system is actually providing some tangible torque off the line with a load behind it. We'll see what happens. Three, two, one, to the floor. There's 20. Sixty, right there. All right, take two. Three, two, one, to the floor. All right, we got our test rig, the fourth gen, no e-torque in this truck. We'll see how she accelerates. Three, two, one, to the floor. Sixty, right there. All right, take two, three, two, one, to the floor. So the Ram Classic was a little bit quicker. You would like to see that the Ram 1500 with the e-torque system um, delivering that extra torque would be a little bit quicker when accelerating with a load behind it, but at least on my course, that just was not the case. Next up is our fuel economy run. We're gonna run roughly 25 kilometers in the city or so. Um, and we're gonna see if the start-stop technology, start-stop feature in this e-torque system is actually gonna give us a difference in fuel economy between both of our trucks. Well, there you go, 2.4. There you go, 2.4 liters. So both trucks burn 2.4 liters of fuel. To me, that shows really no difference in fuel economy. And to be honest, the start-stop feature was only kind of activated maybe a dozen times throughout that full 23 kilometers of city driving, maybe for like 15 to 20 seconds at a time. So. I mean, it's just not going to equate to that much fuel savings. And that's exactly what we saw. Um, once these trucks are driving on the road, the e-torque system basically has no input whatsoever other than maybe saving some fuel on gear shifts, but that would probably be just 
so minimal. Um, so there you go, the eTorque system, at least in my city run, didn't really save us or give us any real difference in fuel economy. So based on the real world tests I did, it just did not seem to be any real tangible difference between the engine with the eTorque system and the engine without the eTorque system. And that's why I originally said to call it a hybrid system is just seems a little bit disingenuous. And I'm sure in a very controlled laboratory setting, everything Ram claims is probably true. However, to me, in the real world, it just seems like a little bit of a marketing gimmick, in my opinion. The last thing I'll say about the torque, and it's something I actually enjoyed, is the throttle response at very low speeds is actually really precise with the C torque system. Um, when I was backing up to hook up to my trailer with this truck and the fourth gen, um, the throttle response with those small little inputs was almost perfect with this e-torque system where that fourth gen you really had to kind of fetter the throttle and just kind of hope that you didn't over throttle or under throttle very precise with the e-torque system in terms of reliability this e-torque system can fail like any other electrical components uh, in 2019 when the system first came out there were a number of battery failures battery issues as well as software hiccups this system uses a 40 volt lithium ion battery pack um, it's in the cab for a number of reasons. The first and major one is temperature. These batteries are very sensitive to temperature. Anything below zero degrees, performance starts to drop pretty dramatically. Um, the big thing is the other way up is over temperature. So there's actually fans all in the case here because the last thing you want is your lithium ion battery to get too hot. That's when uh, fires happen. And that's the other reason why Ram put it in the cab. Ideally, the air conditioning system will also help to cool the battery. It's also not uncommon to hear that the motor generator itself is having issues where it's simply drawing too much power or if it's actually completely shutting down the truck. It's not that the e-torque system is prone to failure. It's just when you start to add more layers of electronic components, more complexity, the risk of failure tends to go up. Um, looking at something like Ford's power boost engine in their, uh, in their F-150s, that was rated as one of the most least reliable vehicles in 2023. And I would highly suspect that has to do a lot with the complexity behind the engine. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at something like an e-torque system. Overall, I do think that the e-torque system was a little bit more of a marketing item more than anything. I'm not doubting Ram's performance claims, but I just think the performance in the real world is, is rather minimal and too minimal for me to celebrate um, the added feature of the eTorque system. I just don't think it brings enough increased performance to the truck versus an engine that does not have the eTorque system. As always, let me know what you think. Um, this thing's been out for five years, so I'm sure a number of you guys actually own some of these trucks with eTorque systems. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Have you had issues? Is it reliable? Always love hearing from real owners. Get a lot of information from you guys. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. If you did like the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe. We'd love to have you on board. Anyways, enough of me. See you in the next freaking video.